Welcome to worship. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I invite you to stand with us as we lift our voices. There's just something about it fills my heart with joy. There's just something about his name. Only one that I worship, only one I adore, only one my heart will praise. There's just something about his name. table. We are glad that you are here. I see some faces that I don't that I don't know, so welcome. We claim and we believe God's love never changes. Like the very well-known scripture John 3:16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his son for us, and through that we have life. This love transforms and changes us. We are welcome to come to him today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with the things that hurt us, the things that bother us, the things that we feel ashamed of, the things that we are troubled by, the addictions that we have, and our hopes and joys. You get to bring all of that. Come. Come all you weary. Come all you Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. 
God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. Bring all your failures. to Westside Table. I'm Latanya Warden, the Director of Ministry. So happy to see each of you here today. If you are visiting for the first time, we welcome you. We know it's not easy to try a new place, and we're happy you chose to worship with us. At Westside Table, we believe there's a place for you at the table. Um, today, we will hear about the gospel's claim of what's essential to experience the love of God that comes from a growing relationship with Jesus and to be transformed by it. We also have first Sunday potluck, so we hope you will stay and eat with us. And thank you for all the ways you help us build a bigger table. Let us pray. God, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for allowing us to gather together again. Thank you for the gift of salvation and the love that you have shown us through Jesus. Bless this time of fellowship and worship. We pray these things in your name. Amen. And now will you greet your neighbors and join me in the passing of the peace.
Well, welcome, and you may be seated. My name's Daniel Ogle, and I'm the pastor here at West Side Table, and I want to welcome and thank you so much for being here. What is this, like, passing of the peace going next door? What is happening? Uh, I feel like that's, that's a bit much. But we are so glad that you're here. I want to extend a special welcome to you, particularly if you're here for the first time. If you're here for the first time, you picked a great Sunday. This is a potluck Sunday, so... Uh, We'll have lunch right after church, and so we're super glad that you have chosen to be here. In this season of Lent, one of the ways we begin worship each Sunday is with a prayer of confession in which we admit that we are not yet who God has made us to be, and we rely and give thanks for the grace of God. So will you join me in the prayer of confession, which will be on the screen behind you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you invite us to a relationship of love and grace that can transform our lives as we follow you in faith. We confess, however, that too often we neglect our relationship with you because we are too busy and consumed with doing. Forgive us our sins and remind us of the power and the gift that comes from spending time with you and being in your presence. Restore us with your grace and fill us with the resolve to say no to other things so that we can say yes to you and experience what we truly need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, we are able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. In this Lent season, we are doing our best to ask for Christ to arise in me. That's the song that we've been singing as a, as a response. And something that I've been thinking about is how the love of God, this love that nothing can separate us from, transforms us when we allow ourselves to experience it. Um, the first two verses in Romans tell us a little bit about how we can do that in this Lent season. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit it in without even, fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. That is our prayer, that Christ would be fully in us and that we would live that out in this Lent season and throughout the year. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you.
What a great beginning to worship this morning. At this time, we're going to invite Westside Kids next door. They're going to continue their learning and growing throughout this Lenten season. And so as they uh, make their way next door, I want to share um, a couple uh, announcements. Uh, in a minute, we'll come to God as we pray, but want to share a couple things. Uh, first of all, we want to ask Hope Scalac to stand up. We want to wish you a happy birthday. So hope our birthday this weekend. So, yeah, I think she turned 21 is what I heard. So we are, uh, we're so glad to celebrate hope. We also, uh, Stephen and Alex are at the back. Many of you know Stephen and Alex stand up a little bit. So they're getting married next Saturday. So we want to celebrate. Pray for them so you guys are good. I also want to share, those of you who are subscribed to our email list know this. Uh, those of you who want to be in the know, you might want to subscribe to our email list. But uh, as many of you know, for the last uh, several months, we've been in conversation with the folks at Collins Memorial United Methodist Church, which is up here on Bolton Road, about half a mile from here about merging with that congregation and really about acquiring that piece of property to kind of establish a more permanent place and space for West Side Table. I want to share with you that Collins Memorial voted last Monday unanimously to approve that deal. Um, and so... So the next step is that at Peachtree Road, we will have a vote to approve that on our side at the end of this month. Uh, that'll be on March 25th, which is a Monday. And so we'll have more information for you as it gets closer, but we wanna share that with you. The next question I know you have is when will all this happen? And the only answer I have is I have no idea. And so uh, we are grateful and thankful for the hospitality and welcome here at round trip and so what I would share with you and say to you is we will be here worshiping on Sunday morning at round trip until we tell you that we won't and so as you make your plans uh, we hope that you will continue to worship and celebrate here with us um, we certainly covet your prayers we certainly covet your prayers throughout this process but we see this as very good news very exciting news to allow us to establish a more permanent presence here as we serve our neighborhood. Um, we know that you bring things here into this space as we go to God in prayer. I want to just share, even over the last uh, couple days, I've been uh, hearing from folks. We've had some folks in the congregation lose jobs. We've had folks who have family who's sick and struggling. So there's a lot of concern and grief here in our congregation. So pray that you would hold folks in your prayers, not only today, but also throughout the week. In a moment, I'm going to pray out loud, but know that you will pray silently in your seats as well. Will you join me as we pray together? Gracious God, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for all the ways that you're at work in our lives, for the power of your gospel the power to transform us, to change us, to help us move out of the patterns that hold us back and lean forward into life and life abundant. God, we confess that sometimes it's difficult. We confess that sometimes we get lost in our own way, that sometimes we get distracted, that each and every day we have many things to do and that can sometimes lead us to forget to be connected with you, which is the one thing we most need. So we pray that you might forgive us of our sins, that you might restore us with your grace and your mercy, that we might be transformed in the power of your love. Not just in a Sunday morning way, but in each and every moment, in each and every day way, that we might become who you have created us to be. 
We give you thanks today for all the ways that you our work in this place as we get to be your church in this community as we get to be able to be part of the transformation of your world empower us change us make us who you want us to be so this world can look more like you would have it be we pray all of these things in jesus name amen at this time i invite you to stand as you're able as donna comes and reads for us Today's reading comes from Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of, of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Before I begin this morning, I want to say a couple of things. I want you to invite you to say an extra prayer for the Bolton parents in the room. Um, we had the school fundraiser last night, and uh, some of us are a little older than we used to be, and that wake-up call was a little earlier than it used to be. But we're here and uh, grateful to be here and grateful to be a church that supports uh, and impacts community. We had about 25 folks from the church who were there at the school event last night. Uh, Jess and Mel, your absence was noted, just so, just, 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 just so you know, just so you know. But I, I've, I've been noticing something this week that maybe you do this, sometimes I do this, that when someone asks, how are things going, the first thing I tell them is what I've been doing. It's an open-ended question, right? Like, how are things going? What's going on in your life? How? What do you want to tell me? And immediately I will often say, well, I've been doing this, I've been doing this, I've been doing this, or I've got this to do, I've got this to do, or whatever. It's almost like so many of us are wired to be about what we do, to be about what we're producing, to be about the, the things or the activities that are taking our time. It's almost like that we feel like life is really rooted in production. What is it that we do? What is it that we can get accomplished? What is it that we can make happen? Today we are continuing this Lent series that we've called Subtract. How do we clear out some of the stuff that separate us from God and how do we make room for what Jesus might say today, which is the one thing needful, right? that Donna read for us. And so today we're going to talk about these expectations that we have of doing. These expectations that we have about checking things off the list. These expectations that we have about building a life of production. Because what Jesus invites us to, what Jesus wants us to know is that the gospel is about more than efficiency. The gospel is more about more than us getting things done. The gospel is about more than what you can produce. You were, in fact, made for more. You are more than that. So we're going to focus today on a passage that most of you, if you've been in church for any time, you probably know this passage. One of you came in this morning and said, Daniel, I got a bone to pick with you because a lot of us in this room are Marthas. We get stuff done. And I like to say, a church is run by Marthas. Amen. We don't want to push them out. But Jesus invites us in this passage, you get really two visions of what faithfulness looks like. 
You get two visions of what it means to make room for Jesus. And Jesus invites us to a way of life that frees us. He invites us to a way of life that opens a relationship with God with us and has the power to transform our lives. So the first thing I want to do this morning is there's a lot of sermons. We've heard a lot of sermons over the years, right, that kind of take a shot at Martha, right, in this sermon, right, that, that you know, well, she's just too busy doing all these things. The truth is, is that Martha is doing what she's been taught to do. In this time and in this place, in this culture, hospitality is the number one value. Hospitality is the number one value. So when someone comes to your house, it better be ready. So that when someone comes to your house, you're going to do everything you can to make them feel welcome. You're not going to have stuff all over the floor. You're not going to have things disorganized, that it's going to be ready, that they're going to be welcomed and received well into your house. Because when you, how you welcome someone into your house in this culture communicates what you think about them. It communicates to them how highly you value them. It communicates to them what you think of them and how much time you are willing to invest in welcoming them into your home. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And so when Martha is getting frustrated with her sister Mary who's just hanging out with Jesus while she's doing all the stuff, she fully expects Jesus to take her side. She fully expects him to say, well, of course, get up off the floor, go help your sister. She's trying to do the things, just keep doing all the things. Now, first of all, Jesus is smart enough not to get into a fight with two sisters, okay? He's not going to get in the middle of that. But he says, right, there's more to life than the doing. There are many things going on here. He says, but the many things are forcing you to miss the one thing. The many things are forcing you to miss the one thing. I can relate to Martha, and I bet you can too. Because all of us know what it's like to live with a checklist, right? That we in this room are people who get it done. That we are people who get stuff done that you know what it's like to start your day with a checklist. That you gotta get up, you gotta get breakfast ready, you gotta get the kid to school, but before that you gotta pack their lunch, you gotta make sure they're not wearing something crazy. That might just be my kid, but some of you uh, may know that. But, and then you gotta get to work and then you've got your list at work and you've gotta do all the things. And those of you who don't have kids yet, you know, you actually still have a social life. So then you actually have the ability to go hang out with folks. Maybe someone wants you to be somewhere. Maybe someone wants you to come out. You know, I go to bed at eight o'clock. I don't really know what that's like anymore, but I've heard that that still happens. I mean, y'all, I hung out till 9.30 last night at the fundraiser, like I, that was good. Like, I was feeling like I was in it. But we know what it's like to have stuff to do. We know what it's like to have stuff to get done. We know what it's like to have to show up at the meeting. We know what it's like to not want to disappoint anybody. So we can relate, I think, to Martha and those expectations. And we can relate to what it's like to try to build a life that's constant, right? Jesus says there's more to life than efficiency. The invitation of the gospel is that salvation doesn't come from a checklist, that justification doesn't come from never disappointing anyone, that the invitation and the offer of the gospel is about more than that. And so that's what Jesus means when he says there is one thing needful. That's really what we've been talking about, honestly, each and every week throughout this series, is how do we clear stuff out of our lives 
so we can connect with God, which is the one thing we truly need. That's how we started when we talked about Psalm 1, right? Blessed are those who, who devote themselves to God's Word, who delight in it because they are like trees planted by streams of water. You see, the power of faith, the invitation that's on offer for you and me is to be deeply connected to God is to have a real and vital relationship with God. That's the only way we can experience the true love of God in our lives and be transformed into who God has created us to be. And we know what it's like, don't we, to let the other things push that to the side. We know what it's like to let the other things take priority in our lives. We know what it's like to be run so ragged that, that, that one more thing just feels like too much. That the power of the gospel is that relationship with God that transforms everything. That to be deeply connected with God is what we long for. It's what we most deeply need. So when Jesus says the many things are leading you away from the one thing, he's calling Martha and us into back into relationship with God that gives us grace and mercy and power. As we've been reading the New Testament together this spring, last week, one of the readings was from John 15. John chapter 15 is part of what's known as the farewell discourse when Jesus is teaching his disciples what to do after he's gone. He's preparing them for leadership. It's leadership training in the gospel. And Jesus says the most important thing you need is to be connected to the vine. The most important thing that you need is to be connected to the vine. You need to be close to the source of your power. You need to abide in a powerful relationship with Jesus. He says this, if you are connected with me, you can bear fruit that will last. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The deep connection with Jesus it's the most important thing in our lives because it shapes the course of our lives. It sounds hokey. It sounds old school. But if you take this seriously, that means the most important thing we can do before we start the list, before we get on the to-do list, is start our morning in the Bible and prayer, right? Those things that connect us with God. It means that being here on Sunday morning is such a powerful part of our lives. The idea that we hear the gospel read and proclaimed, that we receive the grace of God on Sunday morning at the communion table, that we receive the encouragement of one another in this community of faith, that these are things that bring us closer to God. And if they bring us closer to God, there's nothing more important in our lives. Sometimes in the church, just like every th everywhere else, sometimes we can live in extremes. Whether they're about spiritual growth or social transformation, but the beauty of the Methodist movement is we try to hold those two things together. And if you read Luke 10 and you read John 15, what you realize is in Luke 10, the two things that happen right before this passage is Jesus sends out the 70. He says, go do the work. Proclaim the kingdom of God. Heal the sick. Cast demons out. Do the work of the kingdom. And then we get the story of the Good Samaritan. Who is my neighbor and what does it mean to love my neighbor? What I think that means is when you read those three passages together, the sinning of the 70, the, the Good Samaritan, and then Mary and Martha, what it's telling us is our capacity to do the work of faith, 
our capacity to live out our faith and community is directly to tied to how frequently we're getting closer and closer to God in our spiritual life. Our spiritual life shapes the work of our faith. We can't do one without the other. If all we do is pray, then the gospel makes no difference in the world. If all we do is work in the world, we don't have the strength to sustain it. It goes together. So here's my question for you this morning. You know what's coming. What is it that you need to subtract to spend more time on what really matters? What is it in your life that you need to push to the side just a little bit to focus on your relationship with God? What is it that you need to push down the list so that you can become who God has made you to be? So many of us live and orient our lives around the expectations of others. Let other people's expectations of us drive what we do, how we schedule our time, how we order our lives. The invitation of the gospel is to receive the love of God. Let it come into your heart. Let it come into your soul. Let it come into your life and let it do its work. Let it change us from the insides out. Let it transform us. Let us, let it help us us become who God created us to be. So what is it God is calling you to push down? What is it that God is calling you to push off to the side? What is it that God is asking you to get rid of to make more room for the one thing you truly need? You know what that is. My hope and prayer is that all of us can do that today and tomorrow and all the days that we get. Will you join me as we pray together? Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love. It has the power to change us, to move us beyond our idols, to move us beyond our delusions to receive the fullness of your love for us. By your grace, change us. By your grace, transform us and help us become who you have made us to be. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. invite you now as we respond in faith through one of the oldest statements of faith in the church. Will you join me as we say the Apostles' Creed together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty. forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. I want to say, as you got your bulletins this week, we are well aware that it is the month of March. And so we are well aware. We had a bit of a printing mishap this week, so uh, we'll have that corrected for you next week. But as we continue in worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings, I want to say a word of thank you for your generosity. I want to say thank you for your giving, which makes such a difference in the life of our church and the life of this community. I want to give you an example of this. As many of you know, we have an elementary school partnership with F.L. Stanton Elementary School in the Mosley Park community. So on Friday afternoon, I uh, took our care packages down to F.L. Stanton and Principal Earl shared with me that 
two students at FL Stanton finished second in the district science fair this year across all of Atlanta. And so we celebrate and give thanks for the, those kids and those families and the work that we're able to support here as part of this church, that what you are doing is truly transformational. And so on behalf of our church, thank you for your generosity and your support. At Westside, you can give in a variety of ways. The ushers will come forward in just a minute. You can also give online through one of the QR codes on the second page of your bulletin. Thank you so much for your generosity. Will you join me as we pray together? God, we give you thanks for these gifts that you have given us. As we return a portion back to you, may you multiply and magnify these gifts for your work in our church, our community, and the world that you love so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side. No greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor. The sun, my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. Sing for the freedom He has won, even death is dead and
Before I invite you to stand, I want to say a word of gratitude and appreciation to Kathy Hopkins this morning. So we got to church and realized we had no plates for lunch. And so when you eat this potluck and aren't eating with your hands, you can thank Kathy who uh, did that. Uh, we are so grateful for all the ways so many of you serve and volunteer and make a transformational impact here in this church. And so we're so grateful we could not do this without you. So thank you, Kathy, and thank all of you um, for the difference you make here. Will you stand as you're able as we come to the Lord's table? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace and harmony with one another. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who haven't been here for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who frees us from the hold that fear has over us. You remind us that because of your love and commitment to us, we do not have to live in fear. We can live in faith and confidence. I'm reading something wrong, but I'm going to keep going. Because we know that our Redeemer lives and is at work in our lives. As we return once again to your table, fill us with your grace so that we can experience freedom from fear and the strength we need to live with faith as we follow you. Your Spirit anointed Jesus to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, our very lives, in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken and given for us so that our lives might be made whole. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation, the cup for which we give thanks. 
In the United Methodist Church, we serve an open communion table. What that means is that you don't have to be a member of West Side Table to receive the grace of God that's on offer at this table. You don't have to be a member of the United Methodist Church. You don't have to be a member of any church. You simply want to have to receive God's grace that is on offer for you here. I'm not the host of this meal. Our church is not the host of this meal. Jesus himself is the host of this meal, and his invitation is that you might come and receive. At Westside, we offer communion in two ways, the first of which is intinction. You'll be invited to come forward down the aisle, and we invite you to make your hands in the shape of a cross. One of our servers will hand you a piece of bread. You'll be invited to dip it in the cup. We also offer these gluten-free communion cups. If you would like to receive communion in that way, simply go to one of the servers with the baskets, and they will be happy to offer you God's grace this morning. Would those who are assisting please come forward? Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Please come.
Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom We go today in the confidence that the goodness of God is pursuing us every step of the way. And so it's running after me, this goodness of God. So with our lives laid down, we will surrender and we will give God everything. Let's stand and sing together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you've been faithful. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have been in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life all my life you have been the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running after me. It's running 
Thank you so much for being here. It's been a great day of worship here, and we're just getting started. So as we shared earlier, today is first Sunday, so that means lunch. And so we got a potluck uh, today. Stuff is out there, so I hope that you'll stay and hang and eat with us. May you receive this benediction. May you know the love of God that will give you life. May you find yourself connected to the God who loves you. And may you receive the power of God's grace. May it work within you to become all that God has made you to be so that you can bear the image of God's love wherever you go. And our church, our community, this city, this nation, and the world will be different because God is at work in you. That is the essence of life. May you know that, may you believe that, may you receive that, and may you live that today and every day. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much for being here. Hey.